Hello everyone. I want to thank you for joining me today. This video is entitled Preparing to Go No Contact. My name is Jerry Wise and my practice is entitled Jerry Wise Relationship Systems. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media. I'm a life and relationship coach. I have been in the help, <coughs> helping professions <coughs> excuse me, for 40 plus years. And <coughs> I wanted to do a series of videos and I have three planned. This is the first of those three. And the first video is preparing for no contact. Second video is going no contact. Third video is self-care for no contact. Why would I do three videos on no contact? Uh, I've done a lot of uh, viewing through the social media and on YouTube, and I find a variety of advice and coaching uh, that is offered to viewers. Some of it helpful, some of it practical, some of it right on the money, some of it marginal, some of it even dangerous and I think unhealthy. Uh, some of it is unwise. Um, and some of it is great. So there's a wide variety of information on that. And I thought I would prepare and share with you a video that involves the emotional dynamics of going no contact. You can probably find other videos that would tell you, okay, do this, do A, B, and C. Um, if you go no contact with a family member, or with family members, these are the these are the tips you should do uh, in uh, in accomplishing that. And so there's that information out there. What I find missing is a lack of information about the emotional system or the emotional dynamics of going no contact. And that seems to be an area that I have more of an interest in, and I thought I would share my thoughts and feelings about this uh, with you. Um, going no contact is, and I'm going to define no contact here in a, in a bit, um, you know, cutting off contact with a toxic or narcissistic family member or families, and that's what I'm going to primarily focus on. You can you can uh, go no contact with an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend who's narcissistic or toxic or borderline or sociopathic. You know, there's lots of folks we probably should go no contact with. And that means having no contact with them at all. Um, and then in my opinion, also resolving the inner emotional dynamics of that. So there's, it, with no contact, there's an outer recovery and an outer work and an inner work. The outer work, there tends to be more information on YouTube and uh, online for that outer work. What do you do? You know, if, if they call you, do this. If they write you this, do that. If they stop by, do that. That's the outer work of uh, going no contact. Then I believe there's the inner work of going no contact, and that's uh, working towards having neutrality and detachment and practicing non-attachment to the target of the no contact. And that's what I'd like to share a little more about uh, in my videos. Uh, one notion is going no contact, many believe is a simple act of cutting off from narcissistic family members or a friend or exes. You just simply ta stop talking to them and not seeing or talking to them anymore. Uh, but that's rather simplified because that's like saying doing a heart transplant surgery and replacing a heart is like changing a tire. Well, there are some dynamics and some processes that are the same. You take something off and put something in, much like changing a tire. But one involves many more layers, much more knowledge, is more complicated, has lots of systems dynamics to it, um, i.e. the heart surgery versus the tire change. Um, and 
So it's not quite so simple as that. And I thought it would be helpful to help people understand it on different levels and on a deeper level, and they might be able to accomplish more uh, for themselves and in their own lives with going no contact with someone who is toxic, sociopathic, borderline, narcissistic, the cluster B uh, folks. And so bottom line, going no contact is not flying a Cessna. It's like flying a Boeing, Boeing 747. And I believe that's why it's so per important to have a guide or an anchor or a coach to help you with that process. Uh, while many of us could fly a kite, that doesn't mean we can fly a 747. And we could probably use some help to do that. And if you think going no contact is just like flying a kite, emotionally I think it's more complicated than that. Uh, just historically, I know, and I've been, I was a marriage and family therapist, social worker, pastoral counselor, uh, addictions therapist, uh, worked in a psychiatric practice. Uh, I've had lots of experience working and helping people. And for many years, I think going no contact was not mainstream. It just wasn't common. Uh, the family was considered sacrosanct or very sacred. And, and you wouldn't tell someone to not have contact with their family, no matter how toxic they were. And that's unfortunate. Uh, because again, I think we thought the family was uh, invaluable or, or should be untouchable uh, because it's, it's the family. And so that wasn't an option that was offered to a lot of people. And if you did take that off option of going no contact with a the family, there was a lot of cultural and social uh, feedback and negative consequences and, and judgment and what's wrong with you. And you, that's your mother, don't you know? That's your father. What are you talking about? That's your sister. That's your... And there would be a lot of guilt and shame around doing that. So those who did it back then, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, in the 90s, you know, even early 2000s, or that if you did that, you were kind of considered there was something wrong with you, not something wrong with your family. And so there's a lot of shame and guilt around that. And you wouldn't have a lot of support for doing that, because so many people would not even consider that even as an option. They couldn't even conceive of someone not having contact with their family of origin because their family of origin was not well. They just couldn't even think of that. And if someone did do that, they would think there's something wrong with them. And that was not a good thing and not supportive for people who needed support. Um, also, there was a marriage and family theory and belief that you know, it's important to grow up within your family and, and in Bowen family systems, growing up within your family of origin is very important and, and you use your family of origin to grow up. Well, that's all fine and good unless your family of origin or family members or exes or husbands or whatever are so toxic, uh, abusive, dangerous and harmful that you cannot use that option because there's so much damage that would occur as a result of it. The benefit you would get in self-differentiation and maturity would not outweigh the damage you would have from all the abuse. And so that what that's not a good option for many. Um, As we know, there's different levels of contact with family members and with people who are toxic. Some people we have to deal with. Some people, you know, just I talked to I don't know how many grandparents who have children who are narcissists or very troubled or mood disordered or all kinds of difficulties, bipolar, um, and they have children, which would be the grandparents' grandchildren, and the grandchildren are used as pawns and all kinds of dynamics like that. And it's very painful. And so, you know, when do you go no contact? When do you, if you cut off your child, then you cut off the grandchildren. And it becomes very painful a decision in that. The collateral damage is awful. 
sometimes the collateral damage is is absolutely worth it and you have to do it sometimes there might be some middle ground or middle way to work through that so we have going you know we have full contact with other people we have low contact um, and low contact with people is a very minimal contact with them both maybe emotionally and externally or physically then we can kind of go gray rock uh, with some interactions in which we are emotionally neutral but have some physical contact with them. And then we go no contact, which is where we want no physical contact with them, no external contact with them, and we want to have no emotional contact with them either. We want to detach from them. We want to let them go. And that's the uh, going no contact. And what I find, especially when if you've listen to a lot of people on YouTube or different places uh, there's so much anger involved sometimes when they talk about going no contact and they're very proud of going no contact which I absolutely am glad they are out of that toxic environment but they're left with the anger the rage the hurt the depression and and they're not dealing with those things very well they're just proud of their no contact but have not resolve the anger that they felt about those things and I think it's that dual healing that we need internally and externally because because of that anger you might ill advise someone about what they should do um, and and that's true for any therapist that's true for any coach if you're not dealing with your own issues you're going to project those onto your clients, your patients, the people you're helping, the viewers that you have on YouTube. You're going to, you're going to, there's going to be some uh, ill advice because you're not centered and you're still stuck in those feelings. Um, what is no contact? No contact is an adult intentional choice, and I do mean intentional to fully withdraw from a relationship regardless of the desires of the other person. And that means withdraw from it emotionally and physically. No contact, we're not going to talk, we're not going to communicate, and I'm going to withdraw from it emotionally. And I'm going to work to, um, to do and live non-attachment. Uh, and and uh, use non-attachment as my process to um, have a, to in the relationship I have with you. I wish to break that relationship in which we don't have any. And that's often not done by just a day's decision, and then you just say, "I'm not going to call them anymore." Okay, that's over. Uh, relationships are more complicated than that, uh, and that's why I say it's a. It's a recovery work versus simply a snap decision. No contact is a work of recovery. And so that's a part of how I view no contact. And I definitely recommend that you use a guide, professional, coach, or therapist to help you with the decision to go no contact. This uh, video is about preparing for no contact. Uh, use a guide, use an anchor, because I, I really think that's going to help you be more successful and heal much better. We don't want to go no contact out of reactivity or a lack of a sense of self, or just out of our inner child who's upset or reactive. This decision should be made by our inner, inner adult along with a loved inner child. If we do it out of reactivity, then in many ways we are perpetuating the relationship we had with the no contact folks. For example, if a family is toxic to a child and scapegoating them, mistreating them, abusing them, and then out of the child's reactivity as an adult, we're an adult now, and we're tired and mad about it, well, I'm just going to shut you all down. I'm not going to do anything with you guys. The problem is now I'm kind of solidified or cemented in that scapegoating role. And I haven't broken out of that, out of my role and out of their uh, dynamics. 
I'm filling, I'm filling, fitting in to the family and using no contact to fit in as a scapegoat. So I don't want to fit into the family dynamics. What we want to do is do something different. And that's where it'd be A, we just keep doing what we've always done with the family. B, I'm going to be reactive and I'm going to say, I'm getting out of here. I'm tired of being a scapegoat. See ya. Now I'm a scapegoat who's gone no contact. Or C, I'm going to work through and identify and choose to go no contact as an adult, not out of reactivity and out of the family dynamics and out of the family processes. I don't want to function out of the family processes. Roles, emotional reactivity, I don't want to function out of that. Because if I do, there'll be a little longer um, lasting uh, consequences. We must identify our uh, boundary threshold so we can declare self and choose for self that this relationship will not be influenced to the better no matter what I do, that this relationship is toxic, abusive, or dangerous, and that they have no capacity or willingness to change or negotiate a better relationship, and that boundary setting has failed. Uh, that can be abusive partners, narcissistic parents or partners, narcissistic or borderline family members, sociopathics, even alcoholic drug addicts, um, uh, partners or family members. Leaving a family or a narcissistic family members and going no contact is like breaking a heroin habit. It is also likened to divorce from a very long marriage. And you don't just heal from that just by signing the divorce papers. There are many levels of healing that go along with that. And we are very imprinted, often enmeshed, often emotionally dependent, often driven by the family dynamics, often a part of the uh, family super self that we become a part of that just saying okay I'm going no contact doesn't resolve all that and so we want to look at all that so that we can begin to really get free and really have liberation and really have joy and really have our own selves and not just be a part of a, a mirror reflection of the family only an opposite reflection rather than their reflection. So we need to begin to prepare for, uh, we're going to feel some discomfort, we're going to feel some anxiety, uh, feelings of rejection or abandonment, grief, regret, aloneness, um, guilt, and other feelings. Um, there's going to be cultural guilt and shame. Because if you talk to other people, they're going to go, what did you do? Wait, you don't have any contact with your family? Or you don't have any contact with your parents? Well, well, what's, you know, again, that notion of parents and family are sacrosanct. They are sacred. And they, and, and honor your father and your mother. I'm going to be talking about that in a later video. What do we do with honoring our father and mother? For those of you who have a Christian um, and uh uh, Jewish or Abrahamic faith. Uh, but culture will say, oh, there's something wrong with you if you're doing that. Because they can't be that bad. And, you know, I mean, they did birth you and, and your mother did take care of you and your father did provide food in the house. And, you know, there'll be all that kind of cultural shame and guilt. Societal disapproval and fear because they may be triggered in their feelings about their family because you're making a step of differentiation and wholeness. And that threatens them because they're going, man, I, you mean somebody can really do that? Gosh, I, my parents are horrible, you know, and yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with that. So um, they can be fearful if you raise that. And then there's also the religious tensions, like we mentioned, the honor your father and your mother, and you're supposed to treat them with total respect, love, dignity, and, and be a doormat for them no matter what they do.
that's kind of the because they have an honored position. Well, having been a pastor uh, in the past and a bishop, I think I can talk to some of that, and I hope to do that in the future. So we want to, in preparing for going no contact, we want to be practicing non-attachment, which I'll be talking about. We want to also look at inner bonding. Again, a book by Margaret Paul, which I really like, called Inner Bonding, because we want to begin to bond with ourselves as we're detaching from the family. So you're attaching and detaching at the same time. And we will replace our family member, our partner, our boyfriend, girlfriend, siblings, uh, whoever we have uh, gone no contact. We will be replacing them with us, with ourselves, to begin with. And then we want to begin to replace uh, and, and build a new family, new support, new uh, people in our lives. Well, what are some of the signs that in preparing for going no contact, what are some of the signs that you might need to go uh, no contact? I did share some of these in my, I've added some that I'd like to share with you. I did share some of these with a live broadcast that I did uh, a couple months ago. If you go to my YouTube channel, Jerry Wise Relationship Systems, you can find that live broadcast and um, and also hear our whole discussion with viewers also about going no contact. So, uh, you know, um, one of the things I think of that um, you this is a systems added uh, uh, sign that maybe you should go no contact. In family systems, when we try to make a change within a family and I make a decision to do something different or play a different role, I'll get resistance from the family or resistance from others because they don't like that. They like the normal family dynamics. And so they'll say, well, Jerry, uh, why are you doing this? I mean, are, are you sure? This, this doesn't seem quite right. And then if I continue to maintain that position, then they move to, you know, you really should stop doing that. You know, we don't like that at all. You need to stop being the way you're being. Uh, and then thirdly, the third stage of resistance is you better stop or else. And that's what families will do. But if we can go through all three stages, for most families, they will come around and accept a new you to a greater degree. If they stay in that third stage of resistance, which is you better stop this or else, and there are consequences and all kinds of bad things that happen. If they stay stuck in that stage, then that may be a reason to go no contact. That might be one of the signs to help you go no contact. Also, if your family abuses you physically, verbally, or sexually, is a reason to go no contact. Your family abandoned you forever, and now they want you back. Um... There's financial abuse involved. I've been talking with clients recently, and I've got a number of people who are being financially abused by children, by parents, by siblings. Uh, and if you have financial abuse, then um, you may want to go no contact. They show no remorse when you tell them that they hurt you. They don't care. Doesn't matter. Uh, you deserved it. Uh, your family wrecked your marriage or relationship. Therapists, coaches, pastors, you know, whoever have told you to go no contact, that might be a sign you might consider going no contact. Your family's love is really purely, un is purely conditional. It's always conditional. We love you as long as da, 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 you do this and you are this. And you don't disagree and you don't, you know, do what we don't want you to do. Because if you do, we'll withdraw that love. Your family is in a religion that acts cult-like uh, and you want out. You may have to go on no contact. Uh, you can't remember a discussion with your family that didn't result in your tears. You may want to consider no contact. You live in fear, not knowing how your family will behave from one day to the next. There's so much volatility uh, in, their, in their lives. 
multiple people have told you that they think your family is very toxic. Your relationship with your family is all about one person or every person but you. Um, they did something unforgivable, killed your favorite pet, chose strangers over you, um, you know, um, uh, sabotaged a job opportunity, um, sabotaged a relationship opportunity. Uh, they regularly use no-win mind games to manipulate you and to control you. Uh, because if there's a no-win mind game going on, how, you're not going to get anywhere. And you're not going to have a relationship. You're just going to have an existence. Your family puts you in a horrible situation. You know, they raised you in a drug den. Uh, they purposely gotten you fired just so that you wouldn't leave them. Um, and again, those mind games can be gaslighting, emotional back, blackmail, guilt trips, lying, um, uh, and those are some things you might want to consider. I added some other of my own. When self-differentiation, neutrality, and boundary setting has failed, then you might want to consider no contact. When family member or members have no insight and are in denial, complete denial, and are abusing you and misusing you. Uh, that can be in denial uh, due to mental illness, desire, denial and lack of insight due to alcoholism, um, and that their illness uh, affects you in many negative ways. And that's after, let's say, for alcoholism, you've gone to Al-Anon, you've gotten support, but there is no sign the alcoholic is going to change or the drug addict is going to change. And it's hurting everyone. Uh, when any personal knowledge is used as currency in the family, uh, no confidences are held, no discretion is used, and your personal information and facts about your life are weaponized. Um, you, your, your father asks you how much you're making at your new job. You tell him and... He says, well, I know how much you make. I know you can afford this for me. That's weaponizing and using your personal information for his own purposes. When, if you told him how much you made, that was just something you would tell him and hope would be respected and not abused or manipulated. So what about preparing yourself? Well, remember, going no contact we become the great truth tellers when we go no contact. We are breaking the family trance for us. And by us going no contact, we're saying something about the whole system. And that's why the system doesn't like that. Because it's, it's exposing the family in a way it doesn't want to be exposed. We declare we are no longer going to live the family's paradigm perspective, subjectivity, awareness, uh, way of looking at life. We're no longer going to do that. We're not going to live the narratives. We're not going to play the roles. We're not going to deal with the lies. We're not going to accept the gaslighting. And we're not going to accept the super self of the family that we're a part of, and that becomes ourselves. We're not going to do that. I want myself. I don't want to be family self and I just do whatever the family wants me to do. Well that you end up being a great truth teller. Well that's not always welcomed in a dysfunctional family as you can well imagine. No contact exposes the family dysfunction. Um, and if and just think of, let's take a simple example of like an, an alcoholic who has a wife and um, that alcoholism, and he's a professional, but he's a functional alcoholic, goes to work, but he's still an alcoholic, has all the symptoms. And then the wife is going, I just cannot live this way. Well, as long as she stays with her husband and all keeps as a secret, then the secret and the dysfunction and the disease can be managed and maintained. 
at the expense of the wife and the husband and you know family. If the wife decides to leave, that exposes the alcoholism. And now it's no longer a secret. And so that's why there can be a lot of anger or frustration with someone who leaves because they're exposing what they want and what the addict, alcoholic, cluster B person wants to keep secret. Begin to view your spouse, partner, family members as people, acquaintances, neighbors, rather than emotionally endowed images. In other words, this is just um, Betty. This is not my mother. This is just Betty. Um, and so we begin to, to put them into a realistic view as we think about them and going no contact. We take them off the pedestal or being deified or being that mommy and daddy versus like in my family, Cedric and Joanne, you know. Um, and again, um, the, they are those socially accepted masters over you, which is what our culture believes in terms of parents. But again, some don't go no contact with parents. They'll go no contact with a couple of siblings or maybe even one sibling. Um, and uh, I've had one um, client that, of many clients who have gone uh, partial no contact, full no contact. And um, when he goes no contact with a really abusive family member, which is a mother, then the ex then his dad, who is not married to the mother, is now protective of the mother, and so it is his brother. And they're not even accepting the fact of how the mother treats the son and how awful he treats him. So, it, it you know, and again, he's exposing mom's narcissism, and the the dad and the brother doesn't want that exposed. I would recommend that you get a guide, a therapist, a coach, or a pastor with some family systems knowledge, I think would be helpful. Uh, find a support group, ACOA, ACA, Adult Children of Alcoholics. There are some adult children of narcissists. There are therapy groups. There's Al-Anon, uh, adult children of dysfunctional family groups, 12-step groups for support. Uh, prepare for the internal battle. And there may be some relapses, which is okay, but we're preparing for the internal battle. We're looking for progress, not perfection. And, and process through, do I need to grow up in this relationship and become more differentiated? Or is this relationship more toxic than the benefits I would get using them to grow myself up? I think that's a very good question because I have a lot of people come to me and say, should I go no contact or not? I have some people, and I've been aware of some people, who've needed to grow up within their family and could, but took the no contact approach. Then I have other people who are trying to grow up in their family, and their family is so toxic that it's so difficult to grow up, but they don't choose no contact. So I think it's good to have a guide to help you as to which way to go. Remember, going no contact is outside the norm for society and most cultures and most all families. There will be resistance. You may have the most resistance coming from yourself. And that's another thing to remember. The guilt, the shame, giving up dreams and fantasies about the family you always wanted. The anger, the sadness, the hurt. I'd like you to look for a couple more videos I'm going to be doing. One's going to be on going no contact. The second's going to be on self-care for no contact. I hope that you will reach out to me if uh, you would like uh, more help or if you would like to work with me. My... Um, uh, Contact information is below. It's listed there. You can find me at www.jerrywiserelationships.com. You can send me a message and I'll reach out to you. I do get a lot of info, a lot of requests from people, so I hope you'll be patient. But keep trying to contact me. I will contact you. 
Uh, there have been few, if any, I've ever not contacted back. And that's only because they sent me information, sent me their name and a question and never put an email on or a phone number. No way I could get back to them. So please be sure to put a way for me to contact you. Um, I hope today has been a help in talking about preparing for no contact. It's not an easy topic, not an easy subject. I hope we can begin to learn how to drive the uh, fly the 747 rather than the Cessna, and maybe we'll be more successful in our uh, in going no contact. Again, I thank you for joining me today, and have a great day.